that these crossovers are going to um, a guy called Jesse in America who contacted me by email, said he's got a, Rogers, a pair of Rogers LS6As and asked if I could rebuild his crossovers. Um, <clears throat> obviously, ideally, I would like to have the crossovers and just replace the components on them, um, but that wasn't really an option. And what he didn't want to do was change the warmth um, and the character that they have. And if we went with poly caps, we would probably do that. Um, I've had a few pairs of these before and done that upgrade on them, and it does change them. <clears throat> it can make them a bit more accurate, but um, they kind of lose that British sound, that warmth they have. Um, so I'm basically copying the crossover with brand new um, AL caps, electrolytics, which is what they were fitted with, bipolar. Um, but we're using air core inductor, air core inductors on the woofer circuit, which weren't there before, um, which is going to be a subtle improvement. Um, better resistors and new wiring. So yeah it's good to do this um like i say these are going off to america so um yeah it's quite quite a good one really <clears throat> right so one thing i've got to do is um, unwind some of these inductors to get the values that i need um, because you can never buy exactly what you want and unless you're going to wind them yourself you won't get that so um for the tweeter i need a three um milli henry the closest i could get with a similar sort of DC resistance is a 3.3. So what I'm doing is unwinding it bit by bit, testing it until I get the value correct. Um, yeah. And I'm obviously using the same instrument as I did when I originally did these speakers. Um, so I know I'm getting the same measurement. So this is should be 3.3 it's measuring 3.4 at the moment so what we will do is unwind some of this and i took about two foot off the other one just make sure it doesn't unspool and go all over the place let's try that so it's just keep unwinding keep testing Three point one four, so nearly there. Obviously, it's easier to unwind than wind more back on. Let's try that. Dead. Perfect. So once you've got them right, I glue the tail back on. There we go, all done. Let's do the same with this one. Check them again, just to double check. Perfect. Right, let's crack on with the others. Right, so that's all our inductors unwound and measured. So we've got exactly the values we need. Um, and the DC resistances are pretty much correct now. I do have to correct one of them a little bit on the notch filter, but um, yeah, they're all unwound and pretty right, much. Right, so this is the original crossover drawing I did um, for the LS6A. And on the tweeter circuit, we have a one and a half ohm resistor. We have a four microfarad capacitor here. Um, in the past, I've used two 2.2s because that's all I could get. Um, and then we come into an eight microfarad. 
into our tweeter which is connected out phase and we have a three milli henry um, inductor down to ground so a third order arrangement on the tweeter and then on the woofer we come in to a, a two milli henry inductor to the positive of our woofer with an eight microfarad capacitor down to ground so a second order on the woofer yeah so we all also have a notch filter on the woofer um, because there must be a, a lump in its response somewhere uh, and that's made up of a 40 microfarad capacitor first and then a 1.4 milli henry inductor but this had a very very high resistance and often once you tune the the circuit to the right frequency you want to pull down you will um, use a resistor to attenuate um, how much you pull down so the original um, inductor was like um, teeny tiny filament wire which measured just over 12 ohms so the um, inductor we've got is 2 ohms so we're going to use a resistor before it so in between the um, capacitor and the inductor to correct that um, so yeah we'll make that up as well but that's what we're copying and um, done this in the past a few times and it works well um, good improvements so the client wants to keep the original uh, type of capacitors. This was all voiced with electrolytics, owl caps. Um, I've replaced these in the past with poly caps, but you then have to um, add resistance in to compensate for the ESR, um, and they can get a bit hard. So this keeps the warmth to them, um, and I think it works well. So that's what the clients asked for. Um, we're going to obviously have air core inductors on everything, which is going to give us a subtle improvement. A better resistor the original was only a little five watt jobby sand cast so we're using decent film resistors 10 watts so yeah improvements here and there and we're going to use some good wiring as well so these should turn out well so first thing to do is to figure out how we're going to lay this out on our board so the the binding posts are three quarters of an inch apart so I've marked those out just underneath here so we get those drilled so what I'm doing I've taped both boards together so I can make all my holes in one hit. So this will be the common because this is what we've got on the back. So if we look at it upside down, so we'll be like that. This will be the common, this will be the low frequency, and this will be the HF. So we turn that around, we're going to have the HF, LF and the common like that right so i think this is what we're going to end up with um something like this i want to give us some space here not cram everything together because there's a lot of room in the box um so on the hf we'll come through our resistor through our four microfarad um through our eight and out to our tweeter with our inductor down to ground here in the middle and then on the woofer circuit We'll pick up here on the LF through our inductor with our cap down to ground and we'll come out to our woofer positive in the middle and then we have our notch filter so through a 40 microfarad through our resistor through our inductor down to ground for the notch filter. So what I'll do is just scrunch this up a bit drill the holes because the cables are going to go through and then we're going to solder them behind um, and yeah do it that way. Right, so this is one all glued up and kind of ready. So tweet a circuit in through our resistor, four, uh, four microfarad, inductor down to ground, eight microfarad and out to our tweeter. And then on the woofer, in through our inductor, out to our woofer, um, capacitor down to ground, eight microfarad. And then also we have our notch filter here. 
so 40 microfarad, uh, 10 ohm resistor, our inductor down to ground. So yeah, that's what it looks like. And then here we've got the three holes for the um, terminals to come through. So we'll have some ring crimps to go over those. So um, Jesse can sort of bolt this in place and uh, we'll do all our connections at the back. Hot glue is good stuff. Just leaves lots of like cobwebs. That's the only problem. That's our 8 and our 40 for our notch filter. our 10 ohm resistor our inductor for the notch filter So I like to try and keep these the right way round so you can actually read the values if you ever need to. I'll write on the values of the inductors as well. I just want to go in there.
So once these are all finished and soldered up, I need to test them to death. Because obviously, if these are going all the way over to America, it's not, <laughs> not as if I can get them back quickly to fix a problem, or it's not as if the guy's local, I could nip over there and have a look. So yeah, got to get this uh, absolutely right. Tested up, making sure everything's fine before they head off. wasn't that long ago that I had a pair of um, LS6As here. Shame I haven't still got them because I could have obviously tested everything on that. Yeah, so there are a few areas on these where there's quite a lot going on. Um, so there's going to be some lumps and bumps underneath. But uh, yeah, it's sort of unavoidable really. When you're point to point soldering it like this, which is ultimately better. Um, it can be a bit more tricky to lay everything out. And often it might not look particularly neat, but uh, it's all good and all okay. So I mean here, for example, we've got a lot going on. We've got the inductor coming in, we've got a capacitor going out, we're going out to the notch filter and we're going out to the woofer. So there's quite a lot to get right here. And you can't easily twist them up either. I'm just using a very thin solder which melts very easily so I can easily coat a lot of it. There we go. Perfect.
Right, so there we go, two finished crossovers. Um, I've had to use ring crimps for the terminals. I might have mentioned that before. These are copper and they're tinned, so nothing wrong with these at all. So I've been able to crimp the cables and also solder them in as well. Those holes will line up with the terminals in the back of the um, speakers, so that can be put over, nut and bolt, as you were before. And then we've got our cable for the tweeter, color coded exactly the same cable for the woofer color coded exactly the same so originally the cables on the um, woofer were soldered so I've tinned these up ready as well the tweeter had push fit connections um, which we don't want so I've soldered these tin these as well so Jesse will have to solder both of those on but otherwise that should be uh, a retrofit everything's labeled um, so there we go, all done. So all that's left for me to do is to give them a really good clean up and test everything through, make sure that we got no breaks in the solder joints or anything like that. And then they are off to America. Fantastic. Thanks for watching.